Um, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming now to the end of the conference. I almost heard a collective sigh of relief there, but not quite. <laughs> we have a few more very important announcements to make. First of all, I would like to invite Karin Pandavera on stage. She's working for DG EAC and has been closely involved in the ESCO project and is going to be talking about an issue that we deliberately left off the reporting back from your workshops and that's the issue of how do we get our national experts and others involved and you're going to be looking at how do you all get involved into the future. Karen, the floor is yours. Thank you. I don't think you've got speed no, things. You're allowed to no. take your time. Yes, but I think I will be about as speedy. <laughs> to put it up, I'm sorry. Um, I will not take much of your time anymore. We have uh, had uh, lots of content and I hope you are a little bit wiser about ESCO now. Um, one of the comments we got back regularly also in the, um, in the survey was that you need quality assurance, you want people to be involved. Well, you can be involved. We only have some of the sectoral reference groups established now, 11. We are going to establish uh, 16 more um, the coming years, and you can be involved. You also can be involved in the ones that are already established. We have one advantage now when we will establish new reference groups. We can use the portal to tell you, so everyone will know that we are going to establish reference groups, and you can send your national representatives well, for, uh, um, to take part in this, in this process. Um, we need, for the reference groups, as you can understand, experts from labour markets and from uh, the education side. Um, you can identify your, um, your reference group, the reference group you would like to send uh, um, experts to. Um, I will show you a list of the reference groups that still have to be established, but on the portal, but also in your documentation you have received uh, yesterday morning, you see all the names of the reference groups that will be established in total, and they are divided in, well, sec per sector, and we base them on the, the NASA structure. So if you look at the NASA codes, if you look at the names of the reference groups, you can decide which reference group you would like your country to be involved in. It might be all, there might be some, but anyway, you have the choice. If you are interested, please send us uh, the information. Um, what are reference groups doing? If it's not been clear up to now, the sectoral reference groups, they make a uh, development, they, they develop the occupational profiles uh, for that relevant sector. Um, and the um, occupational profiles, they are, uh, of course, in the, the combination of the occupation, relevant skills, competences, and the qualifications. But they also identify uh, what are the most important occupations uh, on European level. This is just an oversight of the reference group that still have to be established. Um, you will, like I said, be informed about that uh, through the portal. So I think that the portal should be a very important tool now for all of you that is interested in, in, um, in ESCO. We, when, whenever there will be news, it will be on the portal. Except for the reference groups, you still also can be part of the maintenance committee. Uh, we have a strong maintenance committee. You don't need to bend down. Thank you. <laughs> we have a strong maintenance committee, but it can be uh, supported uh, with some more uh, um, experts because there is a lot of work to be done, and the more shoulders to bear, uh, the better it is. Um, for the maintenance committee, we work with technical classification experts, and the main job for the maintenance committee is to monitor the quality of the output of the reference groups. So if you're very concerned about the quality of the results of what, we, uh, what ESCO will be about, the maintenance committee might be the place for you to be or for one of your national experts. The conditions for these highly responsible jobs are that you will have uh, about four meetings a year. Um, and the reimbursement is like you will get when you are a private expert hotel and travel cost reimbursed, and when you are a government expert only the travel cost. So it is a lot of voluntary investment there, but like you see, it is important. And we already have like 
over 150 experts working on this basis, it is working, it is possible. So if you really care about ESCO and the growth of it, this should be possible. About any further information, because you will have questions, uh, perhaps not now, but tomorrow when you come home, or you will receive questions from your, your colleagues, your stakeholders around you. Um, please, for any information, for any dialogue, for any implementation issues, contact the ESCO Secretariat. You can also provide direct feedback uh, through the portal. Again, a very strong, useful tool. I hope you will use it. Um, but the ordinary email possibility is always there, and you can also Twitter. Please use these instruments whenever you have a question so we can come back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Karin, please stay on the stage because I hope you don't think it's impertinence of me, but I'm going to come to you. And if you would, wouldn't mind standing up, because you have said so many times that the quality is so important. There's now been an invitation for you to join the maintenance committee, which plays a strong role in assuring quality. How would you like to respond? <laughs> Um, I don't know uh, exactly, so in principle I'm not against, but uh, I'm already somehow involved in the development of ESCO uh, in the background, so to say, as a consultant, uh, because I have done the DISCO project, uh, which has already uh, been fit in uh, in ESCO, so, but in general, yes, why not? <laughs> and I think that's, the, thank you very much, uh, I think that's the point, ladies and gentlemen, we heard earlier today that it takes a lot of volunteering. But if we're concerned about the quality, or if we're concerned about the taxonomy, all the rest of it, there are these reference groups. And they need people. And if it's not yourself, then think about who might be a good person from your country to be on a reference group. For example, one of the comments we had back from one of the countries in the questionnaire we asked you earlier was, my country is not well represented on the reference groups. We need more nationals from my country on the reference groups. We couldn't agree more. Yes, we do need more people from your country. Can you either recommend yourself or find somebody else, go through this process and put them forward onto the reference committees? Because, and the reference groups, not committees, what am I talking about? The reference groups, because that's where we need them. Any questions here, because this is a really important message for you all to take home about what's involved in a reference group, what are the type of people I should be recommending, can I put myself forward or do I need to be invited by someone? Does anyone have any questions? Sir, did you have a question on this? Thank you. Uh, Jan Kowski, uh, Charles University, Czech Republic. Uh, probably no Czech people is in, in as all the ESCO groups as I saw yesterday. But uh, it's a very good proposal, your offer. I welcome it, but the uh, address we have to contact was very quickly shown on the table. I forgot, it. Is it on the list or somewhere what we can use? Um, pour les techniciens, que c'est as far as the technicians are concerned, PowerPoint de nouveau, parce qu'on cherche... So just as a request to the technicians to show the PowerPoint again. Control your PowerPoint. Let's get that address up there. Est-ce qu'elle peut le contrôler de là? Okay. Thank you, because we need the address. We need the address up here. Let me try and work this. Getting involved. Here we go. Oh, Ooh. that was me. I'm allergic to PowerPoints. Is that the right one? Okay. I think this should be it. So the address of the portal, HTTPS, please do not forget the S, and then ec.europa.eu slash ESCO, the ESCO portal, which also has, uh, if you enter the portal, there is a way to send messages to the secretariat as well. So you don't need to go through email. 
I think that the portal address is the main address you would need where you can leave comments when you want to be involved or have questions on separate parts of the uh, ESCO project. You can leave comments and suggestions and you get in contact with us. You can ask any question. HTTPS ec.europa.eu slash esco. Catherine. Secretariat. Yes, it's not the esco ecretariat, it's the esco secretariat. Sorry for the title. <laughs> and I'm the, the person who's dyslexic, that's why I didn't see that at all. Thank you very much for, for correcting that. Any more questions? Now, are you all going to volunteer someone when you get home for a reference group? Who are you going to volunteer? <laughs> Thank you for the floor. I'm not going to volunteer, but I have a question. Uh, my name is Lektra Tsigaridis. I come from DG Enterprise, where uh, in my unit we deal with, uh, uh, <laughs> with maritime uh, industries and defense industries. And I was sent here to find out how can we map the skills of the defense industry and the maritime or shipbuilding industry and how can ESCO help us? Or how can we cooperate in achieving something like this? Because I understand that in ESCO everything is uh, uh, organized through the national, let's say, uh, by, with the member states, but not, not in a horizontal way, where we, have, uh, we look at it from the sectorial point of view. So is there anything here to too much together and help each other? Thank you. Okay, before you answer that question, but we're going to keep that question in mind, I do want to come through the audience and I'm going to randomly pick someone and you have to say, who are you going to recommend to be on a reference group when you go back home, sir? Yeah, I would recommend somebody uh, who is uh, helping with the actual established uh, reference group because there's still expertise lacking. I'm recommending a rental and leasing expert which we still not have identified. So if you can help me to recommend somebody, I would appreciate that. So other colleagues from Germany, he needs help in identifying these people. Let's get them on the reference group. Any other questions? I, I know it's late in the afternoon, but we need to get a bit more energy in here because this is really important, getting the reference groups right. Any other concerns or questions? Do you all know what you need to do when you go back home to find people for the reference groups? Is that a question? That's a question. Oh, here we go. Actually, it's rather the answer to the question of my colleague because I'm also from DG Enterprise and Industry and I was very highly involved in the work of our ESCO group on textile, clothing, leather, footwear and leather accessories and I have to say I'm very, very proud of the results. You, uh, some of you saw the presentation this morning and uh, what also for our sector is very important, many skills uh, are vanishing and competences and vanishing and qualifications, so that's why we have to look more uh, deeper in that and identify all the skills uh, gaps, skills mismatches, and we hope that the ESCO, in fact, will help uh, to, to, to identify the key skills which are needed, the sector-based skills, and also transversal skills for the sector to also give it more visibility. So I can share with, uh, with my colleagues in DG Enterprise and Industry and as well with any of you from... Uh, from from ministries, for national administration, the educational centers as well, with people that are looking specifically for sector-based skills. Thank you very much. Karen, would you like to add anything to that question or do you feel it's been sufficiently well answered? I think the answer was quite complete and I only can uh, tell you, please get in contact after the conference so we can discuss in detail how we can deal with this. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, Karen, thank you very much. And we... We will be monitoring how many new recommendations we get for the reference groups um, over the next months and be coming back to you if we don't see a surge of, of recommendations. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of this conference. 
We have one final speaker who I am reliably insured, a bit like Jeremy yesterday, is literally running across the Grand Place, making his way here. So we need to give him at least another five minutes for the commissioner to get here, which gives us an opportunity, thinking about the last two days and all the information that you have absorbed or not, how much confidence do we have in the room that ESCO is on the right track? Is there anything that we have not discussed over the next two days that needs to be aired now? You might remember at the beginning of the conference I said, if you have any questions, put up your hands. If you have any concerns, that means if you doubt that ESCO can do it, because there is a burning issue that has not been addressed yet, now's the time. Please don't leave the room with any doubts in your mind. If you have a doubt, if you have a question, now is the opportunity. And also, if you have any suggestions on how we can do it better, now is the moment to raise your hand. Otherwise, I have to go away in the belief that you are now all evangelists for ESCO, that you will advocate this, and that going back home, your relatives will be so bored because the only thing you talk about is ESCO the whole time. So please, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any, yes, thank you. We have, we have someone who has a question, a doubt, a concern, or even a recommendation. What was more common? Um... Um, a recommendation. So my name is Jochen Nummel. I'm working for a software company called Das Team. And we were involved in a similar project, but not for labor, occupation, skills and qualifications, but for the European Trademark Office, where they talk about goods and services. And they did a similar exercise, standardizing the vocabulary and the terminology for goods and services to make them comparable. And they were running quite into similar problems as here, but where they were developing similar um, productivities or gains. And the trick there was, and I think this will be also the trick here, to map the classification which was created at the trademark office in Alicante to the different national offices. And that, of course, required to map also languages. So to map then the different languages in the different countries to the different systems. And that was the key, and we were talking about mapping here. And I think if we manage to do this, we will harmonize the labor market the way the trademark market has been harmonized already. Thank you. Fantastic suggestion. Was the ESCO Secretariat taking note of that? Ha have we got that? We've got it on the recording. This is something we definitely need to take up. Thank you. That's very helpful. Any other recommendations or advice or questions that we might have? Oh, right, good, here we go. Thank you. Um, Jennifer McKenzie from Ireland, the Director of the National Centre for Guidance and Education. Um, just a couple of comments in relation to the transversal skills area where there is um, reference to language skills. I think the one thing that we're not mentioning enough here is language skills. I'm lucky you guys are all doing this in English. If this was in French or Spanish or Italian, I have a serious problem. But that's the issue. I think you can talk about all the qualifications, but unless at junior level in school that all our students are beginning to learn more languages, um, we really have to increase the possibility for people to consider the options of mobility across the, the, the European Union by encouraging education of language skills at lower at uh, the, the school level. And my question then would be to the DG EAC and to the, the chair of the ESCO are there recommendations going from the chair, uh, from the, the board of ESCO, to the other sections of the department, uh, the, the DG EAC, to ensure that those recommendations are taken up in primary schools and post-primary schools and universities? Because you can get a qualification in 
uh, ICT in every country in Europe now and as guidance counsellors we're trying to help people to look at you know these are my skills these are my competencies these are the possibilities that I have but I can't work in France because I don't speak French or I can't work in Italy because I don't speak Italian um, so that you know, I think is something that we need to take on board if we're talking about competences and skills as a, uni a, you know, a, a European Union, we have to increase our, our language skills and I absolutely include myself in that, I have to learn more languages, so thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, a question here, comments? Yes, uh, I want to, to add something to this theme of languages because, uh, as I said, we did the DISCO project and we did it in a multilingual way. So we have 11 languages where DISCO has been uh, translated into. And I want to, to say that it is very important to deal with translation and to know that each language has a lot of uh, possibilities to express one and the same thing. So the, the problem of matching across languages language borders in multi-languages. I think you can already imagine how difficult it is because uh, translators will have to, to select one term for one term and they can add some synonyms but you know uh, you are not always um, knowing if they exactly use the same um, expression as it is for uh, used in the labor market so there is plenty of possibilities to express one and the same thing so I think this will be one of the greatest challenges of ESCO also to deal with the translation and language things. Yes. Thank you very much. Very good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here at the back of the room are people who think they don't need to stand up and say anything. But I would like to come and just get some opinion from the people sitting here. As you're going away from this conference, is ESCO going to deliver your verdict? Well, I just joined the. Um, yeah. I just joined the meeting this afternoon, so I, I didn't see all the presentations. But from what I uh, have heard in the sectoral social dialogue committee, which I'm um, uh, regularly presiding, and I think that Gustavo Gonzalez will, um, how would I say, uh, agree with me. I think it's a perfect and a very uh, good initiative, and I'm practically convinced it will function. Sorry. Very good. Here we go from our group here. Is ESCO going to deliver? Are you confident about the future? That needs to be seen, of course. Uh, we, we have to first have a, a good look at it, and then you can, uh, can judge it. Eh? But I think um, you ask about improvements, maybe. Uh, ESCO is about communication, and maybe it's an idea to have a forum where the members here can communicate amongst each other uh, and have uh, more discussion. And maybe it's also an idea to introduce my ESCO, where you can put in preferences in what you want to follow and maybe get draft versions in there, so you get more actively involved. Because the last two years, you didn't hear all that much. There you go. That's an extremely good suggestion. Um, we have a platform, how about this, and you can create files, or profiles, my ESCO, and you can click on the things you want to hear. Not everybody can join a reference group, but they might want to get involved in all sorts of other ways. So that's great. Here we go. Is ESCO going to work for you? Will it deliver? Well, I'm a private expert in the reference group, so I'm very much passionate about the outcome of ESCO project. So I believe uh, for Cyprus for the country I'm coming from, it will be a very great asset uh, because we have a lot of uh, ambitious uh, young people who would like to search for a job abroad and it will be a very useful tool. Great. Thank, you. Thank you. So some positive notes. I'm just going to go over to this side of the room because you haven't had your say. You're going away from this conference. Is ESCO going to deliver for you? I've been involved in, in the cross-reference uh, group, but uh, I'm very satisfied uh, with the impression I've got uh, during this two-day seminar. And I would invite uh, the board, actually, to think 
look uh, forward to what will happen actually after 2017, who is going to maintain uh, this wonderful project, because after that it's not any more project. Yes, the life after the project, a very good question. How do we make this sustainable and ongoing? Thank you very much for all of your comments. That's great. Thank you for the feedback. It's also my great pleasure to announce that the cross-country marathon across the Grand Plus has now been reached and the commissioner is here and he is bounding up the stairs as we talk and any minute now will appear through the door. Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you to give a big round of applause to Laszlo Andor, European <laughs> Commissioner. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Apologies for being slightly late, uh, but uh, I believe this is a very important uh, moment. Uh, the ESCO stakeholders and uh, the colleagues, the European Union set itself the goal of reaching a 75% employment participation rate by 2020, as you know. But the current economic situation makes this extremely challenging as job seeker numbers have risen by 10 million since the start of the crisis from 16 to 26.5 million today. Youth unemployment and increasingly long-term unemployment are posing severe challenges for the member states and citizens across the EU. But being here today with you makes me feel hopeful. We have been working on the classification of employment skills, competencies, qualifications and occupations since early in my mandate. And here we are launching the first version. All of you are interested in ESCO for very different reasons. Some of you want to improve education or training offers. Some of you want to help people find a job and make the right career choices. Some of you want to improve working conditions. And what you all have in common is the desire to reverse today's negative employment trends. ESCO alone will not remedy unemployment in Europe, but it will improve significantly the functioning of the European labour market and help us to bring more people into jobs. What I really like about ESCO is its focus on skills and competencies that may be relevant for a number of different jobs. A strong skills base and an ability to put skills and competencies at uh, productive use are key if Europe is to successfully compete with emerging economies. While for a long time the main competitive advantage of emerging economies was about low labour costs, today's competition is increasingly about the quality of human capital, and the way it is used in the economy. Time magazine recently reported that in just one decade, the number of university graduates in China has risen from 2 million in 2003 to 7 million in 2013. According to OECD projections, China's share of the global talent pool of people with tertiary education will increase from 18% in 2010 to 29% in 2020. On the other hand, the United States and the European Union together would account for just over one quarter. Europe cannot afford to let its skills potential to go to waste. We need to keep investing in skill formation and also in the efficiency of matching between the skill supply and companies' needs. We need to do this at all levels of skills. Now the question is how will ESCO work? ESCO will help us to avoid underutilization of our skills potential in four different ways. First, ESCO can improve skills intelligence instruments such as the EU skills panorama. This will help policymakers and education institutions to better understand and anticipate what skills the labour market needs. 
Second, ESCO can help employers to better understand the skills of the European workforce and make use of their employees' talents in more effective ways. This will not only lead to higher quality jobs and a higher satisfaction of employees, but also to productivity improvements. Third, ESCO makes it easier for employment services to match labor supply and demand. ESCO will enable employment services from different countries to work together by establishing one common language on skills and competencies. And fourth, ESCO will help job seekers to understand which skills are needed by employers, which new career opportunities can be an option for them, and what additional training they might need. Job seekers and people helping them will be able to better understand the changing needs of the labor market, which is important given the often fast pace of economic change. To illustrate this, I would call upon your imagination for a while. Please take a short moment and try to imagine the financial department of a manufacturing company in the year 1975. That was the year of the Soviet American uh, Common Space Program, if it uh, rings the bell to it all. So try to imagine the desk of a financial assistant with the typewriter, because we use type typewriters in those times, the phone with the dial plate, the books and folders, the hierarchical organization of a company. Now try to imagine the work of a financial assistant in the same company in 2013. The open plan office in which teams collaborate, the desk with laptop and smartphone, the financial accounting module of the enterprise resource planning system. The time span between these two imaginative examples is the work life of one person. A financial assistant starting to work on the desk in 1975 with the tools of that time would be close to retirement now. This shows how important lifelong learning is, how many new things one person has to learn in the course of his or her working life. In many cases, lifelong learning is learning on the job. The beauty of ESCO is that it allows us to consider additional work experiences and related skills when carrying out matching across Europe. ESCO also contains a description of the labor market realities in 2013, and as these realities continue to change for many occupations, the required skills will be changing too. The work on ESCO is therefore a continuous task. Together with stakeholders, the Commission will continue to maintain and improve the classification. We will ensure that it is regularly updated to keep pace with the changes on the labor markets and in education. For the work on ESCO, we have taken a new path and I believe a successful one. While the Commission is coordinating its development, ESCO is jointly advanced by all stakeholders. Instead of developing a classification in Brussels and trying to impose it on all users, we asked all stakeholders to work together with us. ESCO is therefore developed by those who need it. I believe it is therefore well in line with the needs of the market as well. Of course, we invite you and all other stakeholders with an interest in ESCO to continue working with us to further improve it. While the Commission is playing the coordinating role at European level, ESCO can only be successful throughout Europe if you and your colleagues work towards a successful implementation on national as well as regional levels. I call upon every one of you to be ESCO ambassadors and spread the word among your networks and to liaise with people and organizations that have an interest in this tool in your own country. We will guide the process at EU level and provide continuous support through the ESCO secretariat. Please get in touch with them 
if you need assistance or additional information. Only together can we ensure that ESCO has the intended positive impact on the labour market and on the education system. Ladies and gentlemen, to, call, to, to close, uh, I would like to warmly thank you for your active participation in this conference and finally to invite the members of the ESCO Secretariat who have put a lot of effort in organizing this conference to the stage here. Thank you very much for your attention. So I believe we have now reached a moment at the conference where we cannot do any better with this closing speech, so it's about time to close the conference. Um, but before we do so, I would like to say uh, one uh, big uh, thank you to everyone who made this conference happen uh, from the organizational perspective, being the hosts, hostesses, the technical support, the interpreters, without whom it would not have been possible. And uh, in particular, I would like to thank on behalf of the ESCO Secretariat every one of you for your active participation in this, for all this valuable input, insights that you have given us, all the information. We have so many things to take uh, basically to the next board meeting, Jeremy, sorry about that, uh, from this conference. Um, and we wish you a safe journey home. Yeah, and I. <laughs> I think uh, above all we also have to thank our facilitator Martin Watson who did a great job. Thank you. Thank you.